Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with one for all the new model enjoyers out there. Nano Banana 2 seems to be going through testing at the moment. Now, you might remember how earlier this year, towards the end of the summer, Nano Banana really took over the image generation world. It wasn't necessarily that it was better at raw image generation than other models, but at the fact that it was so much more steerable and that it gave people the ability to edit in a fine grain kind of way. This opened up all sorts of new practical possibilities and made it a really beloved model. Well, Nano Banana 2 appeared to have been available for a few hours on Media.io over the weekend and is giving some very impressive results. A user called Singularity on Reddit showed their testing of generating the solution to a math problem written on a whiteboard. The text rendering is significantly improved, and the new model was able to generate the correct answer where Nano Banana 1 failed. Singularity wrote, The model is extremely powerful, a huge step up from Nano Banana 1, and this output was extremely impressive to me. Leo on X managed to generate a very convincing Windows 11 desktop, showing a Mr. Beast thumbnail on YouTube. Also on X, Roberto Nixon showed that the testing was completely without guardrails, generating a photo of Diddy hanging out with Elon Musk and a CNN splash screen discussing a Trump third-term prediction. From those outputs, the image model appears to be now photorealistic to the point of being absolutely indistinguishable from reality. SRK Dan showed the model passing the impossible clock and full wine glass tests, as well as generating a pink ocean and a glass Big Mac with perfect reflections. Gaga from Media.io said on Discord that the model was taken down by Google and that it was only intended for internal testing. However, they noted it performed amazingly well in testing. According to Testing Catalog, the model is slated for release on November 11th, which, if true, means we won't have to wait long. They wrote that the new model is notable for its, quote, improved ability to process complex tasks, such as precise coloring, advanced control over viewer angle, and correction of textual elements within generated images. Now, the model seems to draw in elements of Google's reasoning models as part of an advanced workflow. It spends time planning the output, reviews the initial generation, and iterates to correct errors before presenting a final result. Adding visual reasoning into the workflow seems to allow the model to generate plausible text and accurate math without needing to spell everything out in the prompt. Now, reports were mixed on whether the workflow was based on Gemini 2.5 Flash or if this will be our first glimpse of Gemini 3.0. The rumor mill is swirling once again that we are finally going to be getting Gemini 3.0 this week. Although some speculate that with the release of Kimi K2 Thinking, which is a topic that we'll be coming back to a little bit later this week, that we might get a bit of a delay. Next up, a check-in on where markets are as we head into the week. And at least at the moment, it appears the AI trade may be falling out of favor at least slightly on Wall Street. A series of tumultuous headlines sent AI stocks tumbling last week. The Nasdaq index overall fell by 3%, which was its worst week since the first set of tariff announcements back in April. The high flyers were particularly hard hit. Palantir was down 13% for the week, Oracle dropped 9.7%, and NVIDIA was down by 9.6%. The drawdown bottomed out on Friday, but still raised many questions about the sustainability of the AI bet. Jack Ablin, the chief investment strategist at Crescent Capital, said valuations are stretched. Just the slightest bit of bad news gets exaggerated. And good news is just not enough to move the needle because expectations are already pretty high. Now, we certainly had abundant bad news last week. OpenAI executives talking about a backstop, which got translated to a bailout, which we'll talk about a little bit in the main episode. Plus, Michael Burry of Big Short fame pounding the table about going short once again. Still, the story was clearly not just about AI itself, but also about the broader economy. David Miller, the CIO at Catalyst Fund, said, You've had these macro factors that were effectively making some noise for a while, but nobody really wanted to listen. The consumer sentiment numbers and the employment numbers weakening, it's forcing people to look at the bigger picture. Of course, for many on Wall Street, the bigger picture is that they've already had a fantastic year and it's time to start booking profits. The Nasdaq is up 19% year-to-date and an AI-centric portfolio has vastly outperformed. Many portfolio managers will be tempted to cut risk, secure their bonus, and book a ski trip rather than hold out for a few more percentage points to end the year. Stephen Colano, the CIO at Integrated Partners, commented, Investors are on edge. Seems like the profit-taking is coming from the things that have run the most since early April, which is AI and anything connected with it. Legendary investor and professor of behavioral economics Peter Atwater said, If you watch this week, there's been a decided negative bias to what people are saying about AI. If we see the mood deteriorate, the skepticism should rise, the scrutiny should intensify and those would be behaviors that ultimately limit the potential of the market to bounce. Now, this is not a macro or a finance show, but I think it's pretty important when we do cover these topics to also note when there are things going on that are outside of the narrative factors. And the reality is that there have been a lot of things, both narrative-wise and structurally, that have been depressing markets as well. 
We've been mired in the longest government shutdown for a long time, and there has also been just a ton of macro liquidity receding. For example, there was a ton of stress in repo markets last week that seems to be lifting going into this week, making it pretty interesting that macro factors are being read as AI bubble burst when it's really just a broader correlation. Certainly, some don't seem to care. At an event for Goldman Sachs' young wealth management clients last month, AI was very clearly on everyone's mind. Brittany bowles moller the regional head of Goldman Sachs' wealth division for San Francisco, explained the bank's view that AI is not a bubble. Speaking with Fortune after the event, she said, Will there be some winners and losers from AI? Absolutely. There will definitely be some places where valuations are overblown, and time will tell where those spaces are. But we do not think we're in a bubble, and we pay very close attention to that. Now, one big takeaway from surveying the group of wealthy millennial founders and inheritors was that they are already looking beyond the core theme to opportunities for AI-adjacent investments. Energy was a big focus, as the AI infrastructure boom will require a generational investment in U.S. energy production, and clients also apparently want to invest in AI-enhanced healthcare, including breakthroughs in diagnostics. Lastly today, whatever's going on with markets, the compute build-out continues. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang is asking TSMC to boost production to satisfy demand. In comments to the press in Taiwan at a TSMC event on Saturday, he said, The business is very strong and it's growing month by month stronger and stronger. He noted that NVIDIA's three suppliers of memory chips have already, quote, scaled up tremendous capacity to support us. TSMC, which produces the central GPU chip, seems to be the limiting factor in a supply chain running at full capacity. Now, diplomatic as always, Huang wasn't at all critical about TSMC's efforts as a partner. He acknowledged no TSMC, no NVIDIA. Still, Jensen said his company is working through a record half a trillion dollar order book over the next year, and they need as much capacity from TSMC as they can get. By all accounts, though, TSMC is already operating at full capacity. CEO C.C. Wei told employees at a Saturday event that he expects to see record sales every year for the foreseeable future. He acknowledged that Jensen had, quote, asked for wafers, but said the number was confidential. Taiwanese media reported that TSMC would be increasing their production of 3 nanometer chips by around 50% to reach 160,000 wafers per month. NVIDIA reportedly will take more than half of that additional capacity as they scale up the delivery of Blackwell chips. So as we kick off this Monday, we've got new models, market mayhem, and the never-ending search for compute. All in all, it sounds like a pretty AI start to the week. However, that's going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.